Hey everybody, welcome back to the off-grid tiny house. I am under the off-grid tiny house right now. And um, since uh, last winter it was super cold, I decided the insulation I put in above the floor here isn't just going to do it. So what I'm thinking about doing is filling these cavities up that go all the way along the trailer with rock saw insulation. And how I'm going to do it is, I measured across between the two uh, metal beams. They're kind of like I-beams, so. And uh, that's one, in, one foot between here and here, inside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put thermal pan in here, which is kind of like a high-grade high uh, cardboard material that has a fire rating. And also... Once it's in, then I'll slide the rock saw in and fill this cavity up and then spray foam along the seams here uh, to lock everything in place because once it cures, it's pretty solid. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So this height here down to the metal is about four inches. So I'm going to need rock saw that will fit that dimension. And then I'll bring you inside and show you what the thermal pan looks like. I've been working on it already. I already picked it up. And you can actually see my sloppy job that I used up the rest, the, uh, the rest of my scrap pieces of um, foam, foam board. And I got a gap there to fill with some rock saw. And I got a few more gaps. It's pretty nasty, guys. But hey, these were not cut these were already cut pieces and I just used up the scrap what I had and it seemed to work so I'll bring you inside and show you what's going All on. Alright guys back here again um, I'm just showing you what the thermal pan looks like it's basically a reflective cardboard high quality cardboard material with a fire rating and this is basically what I'm gonna put um, uh, underneath the rock saw and then this will be sealed from the outside with spray foam to lock it into place to make those cavities sealed with some more insulation. Because in the floor, um, I have, I only use 2x4s. I didn't use 2x6s. So it's probably an R20 in the floor at most. Um, maybe a bit more because of the wood. But uh, once I add some more insulation, it'll help with the house, cooling and heating wise. So that's a good thing. So what I did was I made a template up. It's already cut, been cut to one foot wide. And I just draw lines, uh, trace the template, and I've been stacking them up here. And eventually I will cut them. Um, I'm just gonna do one box because there's 25 pieces per box and I don't have the rock saw yet so I want to see how far each one gets me so that gives you guys a little update for now um, let me just check out the noise going on out here oh, okay nothing to worry about just wondering. Oh, happy Canada Day. Um, by the time you get this, it'll be long past, but um, I'm filming on this day. So happy Canada Day to the fellow Canadians out there. I'll give you guys a temperature reading. Uh, 31.8 out. Inside, 21.5. Humidity inside is 75%, which is high. Out is 38 it's 10 19 in the morning um so i'm gonna get go ahead and uh continue working to increase my pile here and uh i can't i wasn't using normal scissors to cut this stuff with so i just use uh, sheet metal snips and uh yeah i'll be back in a bit thanks all right guys back um got about halfway through the pile here of the 25 I'm just going to show you 
um, how many I'm going to need uh, lengthwise. So we have one here ready to cut. And if I hold it up against the wall here, you see it's touching the wall. That means I have two pieces of this, two lengths, and then the one of them will be cut a little shorter to make it across all the way. So that solves that issue. And uh, just to show you that, so it's going to take two, two of these to go crossways. And one end will be trimmed off to make it flush. And then any of the scrap I'm going to use, like uh, these leftover pieces, won't go into the garbage. Because I use these at work. And then um, any other leftovers will go to help fasten up the, uh, the foam I used up under there. To... Uh, that, that I used up and there's some gaps under there so I will definitely need that stuff for that so I'm gonna continue on here and keep on cutting away alright see you shortly alright guys back here once again all the cutting is done for today uh, as you can see and I'm gonna I kept my template over here separate so if I need to cut any more stuff, then there it is. I put all the uh, one foot long width pieces that are now cut back in its box. And I have my other uh, scrap pieces separated. These aren't scrap though, they're going to be used at work. So nothing, nothing will be wasted, which is good. Um, it warmed up, it's about... 30.8, 22 out, and uh, 73 humidity. Sorry, I didn't zoom in. About 11 o'clock. Took me about a good hour to do all that. Uh, my hand's getting sore from cutting. Um, the aerial is, uh, it looks, I never liked it hanging up there. But uh, I'm going to see what kind of channels I get out by moving it around um, different positions. I'm just thinking from that angle over this way, uh, over, the, over the shower, the tail end over the shower. Um, and then hopefully uh, we'll figure out what the best way is for channels. And I might even pull this down and not have it up there. And I might mount it against the wall on an angle like this. Um, I might have to move the uh, fire extinguisher. But um, we'll see. I'm just messing around with stuff. Now, my container, IBC totes, I did wash these out. And there's, as you can see, there's some mold growing inside of them now. Um, I did not leave the cap off, which is a mistake, so the water couldn't go anywhere. It was stuck inside and made like a little fungus greenhouse petri dish. So now I opened up the lid off of this one. I can't get to the lid on the bottom one because it's underneath the other one right there. Um, so I'm going to air this out. I'm leaving the windows open a crack like usual. Hopefully this helps get rid of the moisture level in the trailer now that it's going to be aired out and not um, not uh, basically held back so I'm going to take off guys uh, that's all I'm going to be doing for today I'm going to have to go over to the hardware store um, next time I make the video well before I make the video and um, basically pick up the rock saw insulation and I'm gonna have to talk to them about what what R value do I need for that uh, depth it's four inches uh, depth, depth wise so they might not have that and I might have to end up going with um, two by six uh, type R value in that case, I can just compress it a bit 
and that won't be a big deal. So, um, that's it for now, guys. Uh, um, oh, what I can tell you about the Coolatron. The, I put it under the bench there when I was working. Um, I ordered that wire, that connect the 12 volt connector for the Coolatron. So I'm expecting that in the mail sometime. I'm expecting the switches sometime in the mail. Um, I also ordered some more water filters for my ProPure system. Um, and yeah, that's about everything I ordered so far. Um, oh, also David, I want to give him a shout out. He let me know in the comments that you can get some nice 12 volt LED strip lights that run about 4 watts and they're direct 12 volt so I can tie those right into the load center let me zoom in the load center of my charge controller either either any of the five and that can run right directly off the solar panels um, and that will be a bonus having some lighting in here um, I was going to just use my battery operated lantern from the dollar store because um, it is LED and it's on rechargeable batteries and it, it seemed to hold a charge for a very long time. I had it on the, high, the brightest, uh, brightest uh, level and it was, uh, it was doing the job nicely. But uh, we'll, everything's uh, day by day, we'll get, we'll get there. Um, I do have one of the switches here, so I'm missing nine more. Nine more are coming someday. Um, they're quite a pain to get. Also, I was thinking about the inverter when they're hooked up to your battery bank. They draw standby power. They rob your batteries from standby power. So. I was thinking possibly picking up some, some switches for the inverters too. So that's another nightmare. I don't even want to think about it until I get the other ones in. And that's kind of like an optional thing. But it's a good practice to have those switches um, just so you can eliminate things and it's not draining your batteries all the time. I don't know how much the inverters uh, would drain your battery bank. It all depends on the brand, I guess, and how it's built. So, we'll have to look into that. I'm sure somebody will met, look at it, look up for me, maybe a high-tech guy or um, James or some of my other uh, YouTube followers. So, we'll see what goes on. But anyway, guys, uh, happy Canada Day. I'm going to go for some lunch now. And, uh, yeah, I got some progress done here. And uh, the tiny house is still coming together. So, thanks for being with me.